The goal for today is to get cabinet faces on the cabinets, but the first challenge is getting up the hill. Uh, I think I could make it, but I promised Sarah that I wouldn't if it was covered in snow, so looks like we're gonna get some exercise. Uh, that was a hike, and boy, Sarah was right. I never would have made it up in the truck. It was basically ice under the snow. Uh, well, that's why we call her the Oracle. She knows all. Um, so I don't know about you, but I'm tired of seeing these open down here. Um, so let's get started on this. All right, we got a fire going. It's still really cold in here. I just wanted to warm up a little bit before I get started. So a little spoiler, I do have all of these built. Uh, but that wouldn't be very fun if I just put them in and left you out of the best part. So let's go back in time to the shop. We'll build these together for about 10 minutes and then we'll teleport back here and get them installed. Before we go any further, I'd like to take a minute to thank Skillshare for being the sponsor of this video. So you guys may or may not have picked up by background objects in our cabin, but Sarah is obsessed with homemade pottery. So all these pieces in our house are by a local maker in Dayton called Hosh Pots, who has really inspired her to get out and try to make her own pottery, which is something she very much wants to do. There's one problem. We don't have all kinds of ceramic stuff at home. We were browsing Skillshare and she found a class called Ceramics at Home, Making Dishes by Hand by Emily Reinhardt. Hi, I'm Emily Reinhardt from The Object Enthusiast. Today we're in my garage studio where I make, finish, and fire all of my work. Um, but hand building focuses mostly on working with your hands and tools and just building with what you have. And well, that class was really good and it's put her well on her way to making her own pottery. The first thousand people to click the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. After that, it's only around $10 a month. Not too many people watched the video where I built this trestle table. It's actually two videos where I built this trestle table. But those of you who did will remember when I cut this slab down, I said, I don't like cutting this thing down, but I am gonna get use out of these cutoffs. I'm gonna repurpose them into the cabinet faces. And that's what I did. My bandsaw doesn't have the capacity to resaw a board this big, so I made a jig for the table saw and just ran it through on both sides and then completed the cut by hand. To make these boards into a square, I built a form, I coated it with wax paper, and then I filled it with glaze coat epoxy, which I don't recommend. Uh, I don't recommend wax paper either. Unfortunately, I don't have a good suggestion for you because I don't have a ton of experience with epoxy, but all in all, it came out pretty well. So we got these out of the form and I've sanded them down. Uh, I have dry fit one of these. It's not glued, it's not finished. Uh, the frames aren't sanded. Uh, so I've cut these uh, tenons by hand and I've cut the mortises using the hollow chisel mortiser. Um, I prefer to just do that by machine just because there's nothing special about it. You're just making a hole. Uh, so let's put this together, dry fit it, see how it fits. The first thing is that the haunch goes out, so you can see that it's like this. So let's just put that in there, and in there, just persuade it a little bit. And then some of these gaps will close up a bit as we clamp them. It's always a good idea. So I've routed this channel. I'm going with a very simple look because this is so elaborate. Um, but it's a good idea to just put those in there and make sure that they have room to move. Uh, so, so this can expand side to side. It doesn't need a lot of room top to bottom because that's not the direction that wood does most of its movement. And here they are all dry fit up. 
I've blown these off with compressed air and now I'm just cleaning them with mineral spirits before I put a finish on them. And the finish I'm using is just the same thing I do for everything. It's an equal parts mix of one to one to one boiled linseed oil, turpentine, and oil-based spar urethane. And I rub it on over three coats and then on the final coat I come back and I buff it pretty hard and that gives it kind of a nice waxy sheen to it but it's not like a high gloss. It's a nice finish. I like it and it's easy and it's very forgiving especially when you have a lot of dust. This is after the first coat is still wet. So I come, I let it dry for about 20 minutes. I put another coat then I let it dry overnight and I put a final very thin coat that I buff in and uh, a lot of those irregularities just disappear, the dark and uh, the light. If you guys want to see me cut these uh, mortise and tenon joints, check out my built-in bench seat playlist. I'll put a link to it in the top right. So I don't know if you guys can see that, but when you have a problem like that, uh, I'm going to show you what is usually the pro which is usually the issue. It's probably because right up here is hitting, and if you shave a little bit off, it will fix this little. I'm going to exaggerate this so you can see what I'm talking about. One second. All right, so I exaggerated that gap just so you could see it. I did have an issue there, but it was smaller than this. All right, so you got that. This is going to be hard for me to film here, but so you got an issue like that. This is what you would do. Just, I'm doing this very awkwardly, <laughs> but you just take a little bit off back there. And this, you know, this doesn't matter if you make that sloppy, it's gonna get filled with glue. But that, that's how you fix that, usually. Also, that's assuming you tried all the obvious stuff, right? Always try the obvious stuff first. But if you tried all the obvious stuff, it doesn't work. Now look at that. That is. The only shadow you can see is just from this being slightly higher than this. Once we go plain and sand it, that'll look perfect. Sarah commissioned this leather tool roll for my chisels for my birthday. Really nice for, it's from a guy in Dayton called, uh, or his business is called Legacy Envelope. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, but it's handmade, especially for my chisels. That's pretty cool. All right, I got these out of the clamps. Uh, those are kind of placeholders for where the drawers are going to be. And everything came pretty good. Uh, joints are tight. So now I'm going to sand down these tops a little bit. Actually, the next thing I'm going to do is cut these off on the cross-cut sled. Uh, that just gives it a little bit extra strength when you're fitting it. And then once it's all glued up in there, uh, you cut off this extra and then um, everything's square. Uh, I'll show you guys how I do the uh, drawer pulls. So I just start out with some nice quarter sawn wood here. Um, there we go. Alright, so you can see that's quarter sawn. Um, and I just cut a single dovetail into each one. And I've got two on this end because I need to make three more. So now I'll show you how I take it from here. And I find something round, put it on there, roughly in a half circle. So I'm not going to follow this exactly. This is just kind of a guide.
All right, so let's put one of these in together. So first thing, find the middle, take your marking knife, make sure that's pressed in. I'll just uh, go over this in pencil so you can see it. Dulles pencil in here. So that's what we're gonna chisel out. One more thing, we need to know how deep to cut this into this. So to do that, we're gonna use the marking gauge. So we're gonna just go like this. And we can get a straight edge and just mark straight down too. We got this right here on the front. All right, I drew that on there for you. There's a couple ways you can do this. You can take this out with a router, or you can cut it. I'll do this with the, with the saw. All right, so now we got that cut, we can chisel that out at an angle and then we'll just keep working our way in with the chisel. So we've got to this point together before. Basically, you can see my marking line. I'm maybe a millimeter, two millimeters away from it all the way around. And this is the same technique. You just carefully work your way towards your marking line, having it as you get closer, having the material off. Okay, we got this chiseled out. Just nothing fancy there. Take your time. Don't try and go too fast. See how this fits. Gonna fit pretty good. Pretty snug. Looks like we got something holding it a little bit out that way. See that? It fits pretty good, but I, uh, we can do better. Something's preventing it from sitting flush. So let's. It's looking good when it first goes in, but when I press it down, it gets forced out. And I think it's just this corner back here. I think it just needs a little bit like that. much better. There you go, see that? Pretty good. Take it. Just give you a little look at how those came out. Looks like I got a pencil line that I forgot to erase, but it's okay, that stuff just makes it look homemade. I guess my memory card filled up there when I was putting that hardware on. Uh, now I'm just doing the same thing to the frames and the drawers, just the same finish. These guys are still wet, so I've got to do another coat and then I've got to buff it in um, and then do the other side. But then after that, we'll be ready to take these back to the cabin. Okay, we're back in the cabin. Well, well I never left, but you did. So let's get started putting these in. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing those built. Um, it was really hard for me to film this particular time because there's a lot going in the shop. So there is some stuff that I just wasn't able to film. If you have any questions at all, just ask me in the comments. I've got a template here. 
and I also put it on my square and I found that it's about an inch and 7 16 in from the edge of the cabinet. So what I'm going to do is just try and get the depth in and then I'll place these and get the uh, height of them and I'll make a mark and I'll pre-drill it and then I'll fasten. Not bad. I can adjust this way and that way by some screws in there. So we'll play with that later. I got a lot of good tips from you guys last week. Uh, I asked for some help with getting my channel to grow and you gave me some great suggestions. Um, so I'm gonna slowly be implementing those. One of them was not to talk so much. So usually that's not a problem for me, but lately I have been. Um, so we're gonna work on that right now and the other stuff. Just little pilot hole. My fingers are so cold. It has not warmed up that fast. All right, we got the one. It's enough to hold it in place. Let's do the bottom one. Okay. Cool. I'm just tweaking the cracks. I'll show you. So what I'm just paying attention to are the lines. And you can adjust them in all four directions once they're up. So I'm gonna rough adjust them and then I'll adjust them again once they're all done. That's better. You can see those guys are book matched. All right, let's do this one here. They have to go a little bit further towards me from if you just place them there and mark it because there's a gap between the door and the frame. So I'm just extending these lines. So I got these little cross measurements. We're just pre-drilling. Sink's kind of in the way, so I'm not gonna go in very far there. Just enough to get the screw started. Get that a little higher. Got my driver on the lowest setting. You, this stuff will blow out. All right, so now shut it and it usually needs a little bit of adjusting so you can see we've got a big gap right here all right we got that one adjusted pretty good that's going to do for now we may have to come back and modify that a little bit later how many screws am i going to lose <laughs> stay on there come on Can't do it, my hands are too cold. Let's see how this guy looks. So he doesn't even shut. So we gotta adjust this guy. The bottom, certainly our first issue. Let's get this all the way. Nope, oh, wrong way. At least it shuts, but now we need our top out. Too far. <laughs> it's not too bad, but it's clear that it needs a little bit more tweaking. a little better all right so we got that looking decent so far so now we'll just put our drawers in should be good all right so we're gonna do our bottom one first to line up across there and then hopefully it's not so far off that we can't get well with these two well, there it is okay, there we go 
why that won't go back in there, but that one will. That one will not. So we're gonna put a straight edge under here and then get this relatively centered. That's more. That's better. So we're gonna tack these and then we're gonna come back and countersink. There. All right, that's just to hold it so that when we drill through, all right, you, you guys can see all my emergency food. So let's do, let's do one here. Oh, I think we're out of batteries. Beautiful timing. We've got backups. And let's do, let's do one here. And let's do one, uh, let's do one all the way at the bottom so it doesn't flex ever. Yeah, there's no way those guys are going through. Except we do need to turn our drill up a little. Perfect. There we go. All right, found a piece of wood that's about the right size. So if we shim that like that, line that up so it looks fairly decent, we should be able to pull this guy out. Let's step back and look at that. That looks pretty good, I would say. All right, hold that tight, we'll tack that. Beautiful. <laughs> All right, just one more to go. Starting to get pretty excited. Okay, hold on a sec. There we go. <laughs> Let's see how this looks. Gaps are a little bigger than I'd like them, but it's really tough when you're doing this stuff remote. And our cabinets have moved a little bit. Why is these? All of a sudden, these things used to close, like, this is frustrating me. Uh, apparently I forgot to press record on that one, but <laughs> it's the same as the last couple. So let's get that last one put back in and all that crap back in there and we can check out the finished product. All right, we just finished up. I'm pretty excited about how it came out. So let's take a look at it. Excuse my mess, I haven't cleaned up yet. So from back here, I just really, I like the look of it. Um, Let's go look at it up close. So one of the negative things about building on piers is everything moves a little bit and these cabinets are no longer, I mean they probably weren't even level when I put them in, but they're worse now. And that made it hard to get these lines up. By and large, to get these lines lined up, by and large I think they came out pretty good. I think they line up as well as I could hope for. Uh, the worst was these gaps on the drawers, and that was just a measurement issue. I mean, this is a little narrower than this. Um, and then this is the same width as this one. And I don't know what I did. I just, I must have measured wrong or taken gaps twice or something, but um, who knows. So 
yeah, book matched, resawn and book matched. Um, solo guy over here. This piece across the top I put it in a previous video. I'll try and find the link. Um, that grain is lined up all the way across. I would have liked to do something like that here, but I aligned the grains when I built the face frames for the built-in bench seat, and you honestly couldn't really tell. Um, it would have been really hard to do. A couple little things here. I, <laughs> I guess I made this flattened off, and I made the rest of these round. I guess that's what happens when you do stuff like two months apart or even more than that. I forgot how I made those and made them different. Um, book match these guys here. Uh, thought that was pretty cool. So all in all, really cool. I was kind of worried about it and I think I like the way it looks. I think it kind of really completes this wall. Oh my gosh, guys, I almost forgot the coolest part. Check this out. Put some LED lights under there. I can't take credit for that idea. I got that from a Patreon member actually. Home at Alaska, a new channel. Check them out. And I feel like I'm back in high school hanging out in Chris Thomas's attic. Don't worry mom, we're just studying. So I gotta do outlet covers. I'm gonna do Kumiko style grate on that. Probably homemade walnut or homemade maple. Um, covers there and then the com command control center will be somewhere over here all those temperature readouts will be in there and a bunch of solar stuff will be in there so let's talk a little bit about the design aspect of this because i chose to make the inside panels so elaborate i went with a simple kind of a shaker style not even put a bevel on the inside of them uh, just to kind of contrast that like plain with the ornate. Um, and then you're probably wondering about the uh, pulls to open the doors. I want to turn those on a lathe, but I, I don't have a lathe yet, so I haven't done that. But I'm going to make, uh, hopefully I'll make walnut pulls. So this will be the last video in that shop for a while. My friend who owns the shop made a really cool conference table and he ended up getting a bunch of commissions. And so there was three of us who uh, worked in there and with him getting busy, something had to go and that person was me. So I'm not gonna be able to finish like, so see that walnut trim. I've still gotta do it on the door. Um, and I've still gotta cover up, you know, this bit over here and I've gotta cover this chair rail. Um, and until I can get my own shop set up, that, all that stuff's going to have to be on hold. The, uh, the loft ladder will be on hold, building this door will be on hold, so probably be about, I don't know, two or three months until I can get back to the woodworking type stuff of the cabin. But the good news is there's plenty of other stuff I can do, so um, that said, it's, it's going to be harder for me to upload regularly. I might miss one here and there, so you know, I'm not going anywhere if I miss a week. Don't worry, but it's gonna be harder because I kind of depend on those shop videos to, um, to kind of be able to work without making a trip here. Anyway, I uh, really hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, a lot of people gave me some great advice uh, when I asked for your help last week about growing my channel some more. I kind of felt like I had stalled out and I got some really good pointers. Gonna slowly be implementing those. Uh, case in point. This cabin, I hereby do declare that it is now also a tiny house. Uh, that was one of your suggestions. Call it a tiny house and then you can have a different search term. So anyway, thanks again, guys, and I appreciate it.